Hey guys, welcome back to the jungle. Spring Atang here. Welcome to my brand new channel about mycology. Here, I will document my journey so that we can all learn from not just my mistakes, but also my huge successes as well. Today, we are going to go over how to clone your fruit for increased yield, confirming traits, or even just getting bins of mushrooms that resemble the fruit that you had cloned. This isn't a key step to mycology, but it does progress your grows to better adapt to your conditions along with help you get some pretty cool fruits. First, make sure that your workstation is completely sanitized as you want the lowest chance possible of contamination while doing your sap work. This is still recommended to do while you have a flow hood as well. When I do it, I make sure to use 70% iso alcohol as this has enough water content in it to slowly evaporate and it kills most everything on the surface. I also make sure to do at least three different cycles of cleaning with my whole workstation as this will make sure that on my end everything is clean. And I also make sure to spray my tools down, spray the paper towel down before they go down and then I put them on. Spray them, flip them, and spray them again. Now that everything is cleaned, it's time to set up my area to ensure that I have everything in order before I even get started. This time around, I decided to use this baking rack to keep everything elevated off the table. Hopefully this improves contamination rates. I haven't had much of a problem quite yet, but still would like to avoid it at all costs. In today's video, we will be cloning two different fruits, one that ended up squatting out on me and is really dense. The other fruit has some lighter pigments on the cap than the rest of the flush, so I decided to see if that's a trait that would be carried into future bins. To start, make sure to ISO your hands and make sure they're clean. I also like to stage my agar plates at this time as it makes everything much easier. So just popping the lid off on these or I just, when I'm using plates, will grab the plate and put it down and wait until I'm ready for my transfer. Next. Pinch the base of the fruiting body until it starts to tear down the middle. This is important as you don't want to be cloning from the outer layer of the mushroom as that would cause a lot more contamination as opposed to the inside. It might be a little difficult when you get to the cap, but just slowly work it down the middle and it should end up ripping almost perfectly. This time around, I'm cloning from tissue in the area of the cap. Now from my understanding, you can take tissue from anywhere in the fruit and it will come up with the same results. But that would be a really cool idea to try out sometime and experiment with the two. Now, I accidentally touched my blade on my finger during that clone attempt, so I had to put everything down in order to re-flame sterilize my blade. After the blade had cooled, the transfer I was working on had fallen off the mushroom itself as I picked it up. Oh well, I just cut out a new transfer and got on with my day. No sweat. And it falls off. No sweat, I don't really mind. And once your transfer is on the agar, you just want to close up your dish as fast as possible in a smooth, slow motion, just so that nothing else makes it onto the plate. I'm also taking my fruits out of the bin, just so that I have a little bit more of a work area for my next fruit.
lid back on and now I'm just kind of sort of uh, trying to figure out an order for my plates just so I don't get mixed up since they're not going to be labeled. I always make sure to re-iso my hands as this is something that will prevent cross-contamination onto the plates. Always make sure to flame sterilize your blade in between as well, just so that there's no cross contamination. It really helps in the end. All right, so one more time with this lighter cap on. I would just like to note that it's a lot easier to pull a layer away from the stipe on these ones when they're a lot longer as opposed to the thick and squatty fruits. Try your best and not get too many spores everywhere as this is supposed to be a sterile work environment. Sadly, when you deal with fruits that drop spores, there's probably already many of them in this sap. I might cut off the cap next time and still take it away from the stipe, but we'll see. I've noticed that sometimes it's a little hard to cut perfect little samples from the middle, so sometimes even if I can just grab a little strand from the middle, I'll grab it and throw it right on the agar plate. It doesn't really have to be a perfect cut every time, most shapes matter. Another thing I would like to add is that when you clone a fruit, it's already an isolated culture for the most part. This means that you should be able to grab and grow out this agar and transfer it right to grain. At least from what I understand, taking these and further isolating them on agar won't do much. As long as the culture is clean, you're good to go. I will be doing an update on these so that we can see the progress on how cloning goes off of a single fruit. This is important because while cloning you carry on the genetics of a fruit it won't necessarily solidify the trait into its genetics this is because if you went back to spore you would maybe only get a few fruits that look like that in order to fully isolate something you'll need to go back to spore and work through a few generations to sort of solidify that trait into its dna and when you're all done Make sure to label your plates. This ensures that you have no mix-ups, as honestly, I would just rework it if I got too mixed up. Real quick, before we go, I have a website that I just created, giving you all the opportunity to support the Sparangatang love wearing my merch. Doing so helps me to turn this into my full-time or even part-time job. We have some really nice hats, shirts, hoodies, or even face masks so you can show your mushrooms you support me while doing your mycology work. I also have a Patreon where I post daily content about my grows, along with full information for rooting content as I progress through my journey in mycology. When you become a patron, you gain access to my Discord server. This is where we will all create a great sub-community around these amazing things we call fungi. On my Discord, you'll be able to get a hold of me with any myco-related questions. Along with this, we'll be doing giveaways, group grows, and trading genetics as well. If you ever need any help, I'll be on there daily to try to help everybody out that I can. Alright guys, that's enough for me right now. Make sure to drop a comment so that we can start doing a comment of the day at the beginning of my videos. Let me know what you would like to see, what problems you're having, or just let me know how your day was. Have a great day everyone, and be safe out there. Peace.